Welcome to Chaos Coder, and today we will do something very risky. We're going to play with Riscos 5.31, the newest release. And we're going to install it on this Pi 400 that I had laying on my cupboard for the best part of four years. Motherfucker! Riscos is an old operating system. It was released in 1987 for the Acorn Archimedes, the first ARM-based computer. Now I had a colleague, Huip, who also wrote the MUMS interpreter for RISCOS, because he was a MUMS developer, he loved MUMS, still used Archimedes and RISCOS as his daily driver in 1997, until I persuaded him to buy a digital workstation with a 64-bit RISC CPU. And when I visited him and I sat behind his Archimedes, I was actually blown away. Bear in mind, this is 97, we already had Windows 95. But this felt so fluid, so fast, so intuitive. And the taskbar, for example, that was commonplace in Windows 95 was definitely a ripoff from RISCOS. So it was a cool system. And the thing that stuck in my mind the most is how quickly it started. You turn it on and it was like... There it is, it's running. Try that with Windows 95. And I was like, how does it do that? And Hype explained to me that RISCOS on the Archimedes was stored into ROM. And only the drivers were loaded from a disk. So that was really, really cool. Uh, so that was why it was so incredibly fast. Very much like uh, the ST with its TOS coming from ROMs. But it boots even faster than that. Uh, so yeah, but even more incredible than the RISCOS UI is the fact that today, 37 years later, people are still actively developing on it. And they just implemented Wi-Fi drivers for everything Raspberry Pi, except for the 5, because that's really new, a complete IPv6 stack, and the ISIS browser, which allows you to see modern websites. Which could basically mean Riscos has a bit of an extra life blowing into it. So today I want to install it, but we first need to install 5.28 or 5.29 and then upgrade to 5.31 because the 5.31 has all these new features, but it's only there as an upgrade. So uh, let's jump in. I'm as blank as you are. So we go to riscosdev.com and we first download the 5.28 version, this one, which is a 16 gigabyte image, but depending on your card, it fits on a 16 gigabytes card or not. So I ended up using a 32 gigabyte. And then we download this one. This is the actual update. That's only 300 megabytes. And we will actually upload that or download that using FTP. So whilst that is downloaded, we can actually burn the SD card, the image. Uh, it's busy, unmounted. I tested it before. <laughs> there we go. And let's do the DD again. All right, that takes a little while. So in the meantime, we set up the Pi 400. I have an uh, ethernet cable uh, shoved into the back because we're going to actually use Ethernet to download the update that we just downloaded. So uh, over Ethernet, we will actually pull in that update. So uh, from there, right. Okay, by now the DD will be done. So uh, let's shove that uh, thing into the tiny little slot with my thick fingers. Always difficult, thick fingers and small slots. And let's start it up and see what happens. Yeah, it's booting definitely, so that's a good sign. So we have 5.28 running. We're waiting for the DHCP here. That weirdly enough takes a little, and there we go. So we cut over. And now we will actually start to FTP over that information using the FTP client. Type in the IP address, there we go, connect it. And then I'll look for that download, uh, direct 
5531. There we go. Okie dokie, that takes a little while. When it's downloaded, we double click on it and it will unzip and we have a couple of files. First, we need to run prepare in order to allow the update. So that is done, looks good. And then we just control A everything and copy it over from the disk. So basically overwriting the operating system files. Now this takes a little while. Eventually it's done. And then we copy the ROM folder over. Uh, it's advised to run it unzipped. So it's copying and then we just uh, run the update script here. Right. Yeah, looks good. Upgrade. Takes a little while and then that should be done. It restarts twice and then the Wi-Fi should be up and running. Now the weird thing is the second time that I did this, I didn't see any access ports. So I, even uh, I eventually ended up going to uh, the configurator and adding it manually here. In the hope that it would then see it and connect. Uh, set my key. You're not going to see that. And the weird thing is it still didn't work. So I ended up actually taking off the power from the Pi 400, restarting it. And then it started to work because this scanning, it did that forever and just didn't get out of it. Even a reboot didn't work. I had to power it off. It just remained this red little situation. It wouldn't connect. And iris wouldn't work either. And the weird thing is uh, after the restart, it suddenly started to work. It's like Windows, right? And plunk, there we go. <laughs> so if you run into this issue, restart the system by taking off the power and uh, putting it in and then it will actually connect all the Wi-Fi's uh, and you will see it and you can configure it. Right, so slash dot works, but that's not a challenging site. Let's uh, try uh, tweakers.net. This actually redirects and for some reason the redirect from HTTP to HTTPS didn't work. I don't know why. That's trivial. Well, if I put in HTTPS it takes a while and that's the thing with iris it's slow it's really fucking slow compared to chromium for example on respian this is unusable but this renders at least more than we had before but then i tried a site that is a very complex the abn emro uh, banking website and it structurally crashes on this now it crashes here and I had to uh, really restart the system. I tried it another time and we got a little bit further. It crashed here <laughs> and still had to completely restart the system. So Iris is just a no-go. Same as Python here on the desktop. It throws an error that it can't find a certain file, which is weird. But later on I found one that actually works. But let's create a... Uh, a C file. So I create my directory Kellos for Kellos Coder and I create a C directory. Now this is required because RISC OS doesn't have extensions and GCC of course needs an extension. So this is a workaround for it. And in that directory uh, C we create our little code base. So it's just a standard uh, hello that I'm creating. And then we save it when it's done. Oh, this keyboard is really, really nicky. Really weird keyboard. So it's done. I save it. So I give it a name. And this is one of those weird things that you have to drag that folder icon over to there. So there we go. And now it's saved. 
<laughs> that is such a weird thing. Now, usually this is on a 640. In order to run a GCC according to their own documentation, it has to be uh, at least 60 megabytes. So I pull it to 32 megabytes. And then we run the task window. And as you will see, the task window will now be able to use that memory. And then I select this as my current directory. And then we can run GCC to actually build the Hello World application. As you can see, it's a really esoteric, weird operating system. And of course, that's the sign of the times. Things were so new, operating systems not standardized in any way. But yeah, Hello World actually worked here. There you go. Now, this was the issue with uh, Python. I found a working Python up there in the direct back folder. And I'm programming and there is a Python Alpha 3 version. And this actually works, 3.8.0 Alpha 4. And then of course we have the basic. Oh yeah, you need the basic to set the caps lock because it only works with capital cases. 20 go to 10 and yeah, this works as well. Except the browser, the browser is just crap currently, but who knows. So there you have it. We've got RiscOS 5.31 running. And finally, we got the Wi-Fi running. For some reason, the first time when I did this, because I rehearsed these videos, the first time I update, pull out my uh, Ethernet, Ethernet cable, and it would automatically show the list of all the access points. I configured it and worked. Well, the second time in this video, as you can see, uh, for some reason it didn't. I even forced it with my access point name in there, made a typo. Only when I rebooted it, it would start to scan and say, hey, uh, you got a typo in your password. Uh, yeah, so that was a bit dodgy. Uh, Iris, the Iris browser, well, that is just uh, unusable. If you go to abnmro.com, which is a complex website, hence I chose it, uh, it will crash structurally. It's it's just so crash prone. The whole OS is rather crash prone, to be honest. Uh, so yeah, it is fun to explore from a nostalgic point of view. Uh, is it useful? No. But similarly, that goes for this thing, uh, the Vampire, the Amiga. Um, yeah, it's a newer OS, but it's not a daily driver. It's, it's nowhere near the stability that you even get from Raspbian and the speed. Although the speed of starting things here is relatively quick. But compiling takes time. Uh, loading the web pages takes forever compared to Chromium and GCC on the, the Pi 400 itself. So. If you want to run a RISC system, just run Raspbian. Don't look at RISC-OS, only when you're interested, like myself, for nostalgia's sake and for exploration. It is a quirky OS. Uh, I had some fun poking around with it, and uh, that is it for me. I'm just putting back the Raspbian in there. That at least is useful. And yeah, also the basic is kind of cool, but you need to have those uppercase uh, letters enabled, your caps lock. Otherwise it gives an error for some reason. And this basic actually allows you, the BBC basic, to open the square brackets and in between that write assembly code. And that is kind of cool. I wish the Commodore would have had that. That is a great, great addition uh, to have your basic <laughs> your basic assembler in there so uh, yeah it was fun exploring uh, rather useless but fun nonetheless so uh, i hope you learned something and see you in the next one